tell your story. Change the conversation. Organized by students. TEDx Youth at SHC. Fifth grade me would have never been able to imagine just how important music has become in my life. In my experiences of performance, whether it be as a pianist, a guitarist, a singer, harmonic player, or maybe even laying down a little saxophone here and there, <laughs> I have seen music heal and console. I've seen it uplift, and I've learned it is a gift that is meant to be shared. And well, because music is such an integral aspect of my identity today, it's often quite strange to reflect on the past six years and realize that it wasn't always there. When I was 11 years old, I played no instruments and didn't sing at all. My middle school environment, though certainly academic, was incredibly athletics-focused in the extracurricular sphere. There were essentially no opportunities for arts or for performance. And instead, there was this fundamental expectation that students play sports. And not only this, but that your performance in these activities defined how your peers, dictated how your peers would define you. And this is not at fault of the school or the institution, really, but instead is reflective of a much larger social problem. Consider all of these stereotypes surrounding schools and types of students. We've heard these all before your nerds, your jocks, your theater kids. I mean, we've heard these terms. And although we would like to say that these are just cheesy film tropes or outdated cliches that have been resolved in the face of modernism and progressive thought, they're really hyperbolized reflections of a very real and very potent mindset that transcends school grounds and is embedded in the fundamental behaviors and attitudes of our communities. While it is especially detrimental to younger people who are still exploring the world and trying to find their place in it, it influences people of all ages. Older people may not try something new or pursue a passion because they believe it's too late simply based off of their age. And it's this philosophy of categorization that limits exploration and diversity of passion. And I let that influence me. So my extracurricular life consisted of entirely soccer, basketball, and baseball. Repeat. Now, I am in no way criticizing athletics. In fact, I had an incredible sports experience, and these are things that bring fulfillment to people and really can define who they are. But there was never an opportunity for me to branch out, to explore, to find the thing that defined who I was. This would soon change. When I was 11 years old, I began to mess around with this toy piano. It literally had like 29 keys and was shaped like a cat. <laughs> yes, a cat. It was in no way a real instrument, but I just messed around with it. I tinkered, and I would come up with these melodies and tunes that I had heard in songs, and soon these little motifs that I would plunk out note by note would grow into full songs and pieces. And I begin to experience what I'm going to call these sparks, these little recognitions that somewhere inside of me, for some reason, when I played piano, it felt right. It felt like me. And I believe that every single person in this room right now and every single person everywhere possesses an intrinsic gift that they can share, an untapped potential that simply needs to be uncovered. And it is these sparks, these little recognitions, that call and guide us to the unique talents and abilities that we can share with the world. In my case, those sparks were calling me to the piano, to music. And so, although I continued to mess around with that little cat piano, and I continued to experience these sparks, I thought little of it. Because the few friends I did know 
who played an instrument of some sort, had started lessons from when they were very, very young. And get this, 11 years old was considered too old to start lessons by many. 11 years old, too old. So I thought it was too late for me to really pursue this passion, so I thought little of it. But my parents believed that if given the opportunity, this could grow into something much larger, that I might find something truly special and fulfilling if I just went for it and didn't worry about it. And so that Christmas, we got a real 88-key keyboard, and it all took off from there. I discovered that I could play piano by ear, and my newfound musical passion flourished more and more with each year. Because of my parents' encouragement to listen to those sparks, I discovered an untapped potential that is so much of who I am today. Now, 11-year-old me had absolutely no idea that what I was experiencing was part of a much larger scientific phenomenon, a phenomenon that unfortunately, has established a dangerously restrictive mindset in society. This mindset can be found in the concept of neuroplasticity, or the brain's capacity to alter its neural structure in response to new information. Now, our brains are made of over 80 billion neurons, and each of these neuronal cells is organized in a specific pathway to allow us to think and perform various tasks. Now, according to studies conducted by the California Institute of Technology, it is very likely that our ability to learn new skills is heavily influenced by those that we already possess. You see, when we learn something new, our brain's neural network must break down and rebuild itself in new pathways in order to accommodate new functions. At the same time, however, through a process known as synaptic pruning, many of these original neural connections may actually become weaker after the rebuilding process. So in other words, it is likely that what we already know, the skills that we already possess, may actually restrict what we can learn easily in a short amount of time. And in in experiencing this phenomenon on the individual level, we as a human society have created and continue to reinforce this mindset of self-limitation, that in struggling to pursue new passions in the beginning while watching others excel, we have deemed it useless to even bother trying. Influenced by that same thinking present in others, we have created and actually perpetuated this problem. Collective arbitrary dogma has trickled down into the minds of individuals everywhere. So what does this all mean? Well, it means two things. One, If you have an interest in a particular area of study, never stop expanding it. Because our brains are naturally more receptive to familiar information, it means that we can actually learn a variety of closely related skills a lot easier than we may think. Strive to flesh it out and enhance that part of your identity. Before coming to high school, I was only a pianist and something I never considered pursuing and actually feared was singing. And with support from my family and friends, and especially the SHC choral department, combined with just enough courage, I joined choir and cannot imagine myself as a musician without singing. I mean, it really was the logical next step of my musicianship, even though I don't consider myself to be the greatest singer. Singing, I found, was heavily influenced by my piano playing abilities, that they fostered growth in my voice. And so singing served as the next step in the evolution of that untapped potential I came across when I was 11 years old. Secondly, if you have an interest in anything, and I mean absolutely anything, even if it's entirely contrary to what you may think you're capable of, go for it. (laughs) It's as simple as that. Go for it. I mean, it's, 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 just go for it. I've said it before, but just because our brains are naturally more receptive to familiar information, it doesn't mean that we can't learn new skills. In fact, it means the exact opposite. It may simply take a bit more time to revise that neural network. You may deem it to be too difficult and thus unreasonable to try new passion, but by expanding your horizons little by little, you may be growing closer to unlocking your untapped potential 
something you can share with others. Consider all of the potential contributions to the world that were never made, that never came to be, because someone established a boundary on what they thought they were capable of. Think of all the scientists, the inventors, the propellants of progress who never came to be because society influenced them to believe that, well, science is not their thing. Or how about all the entertainers, the performers, the people who never brought some much needed joy into the world because society influenced them to believe that they're not talented, not funny enough, or that's just not who they were. Think of all the people who never knew who they truly were or who they could have been, what they could have done, because society told them to ignore the little sparks of inspiration that they experienced. That is not right. When we hear those sparks, we need to listen to them because they are the roots of a diverse community of individuals with anything and everything to offer. Imagine a world where these sparks are allowed to catch fire to grow into a beautiful light to be shared with others. It is in individual interest, nay, in communal obligation to push past this self-limitative philosophy. Because in doing so, not only may you grow closer to unlocking an integral aspect of your identity, not only may you unco uncover a beautiful gift to be shared with the world, but you may also inspire others to do the same to push past this arbitrary barrier in society and step beyond the ever-fading lines of what we are capable of, one person at a time. Thank you.